In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Don't deserve it Still you 
heart and oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the ninety nine and I couldn't earn it and I don't deserve it still you yourself away oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of this generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. This is how God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. me in your 
All the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. So Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder. Crucify him. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews. They spit on him and they took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself if he's God's Messiah, the chosen one. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon for the sun had stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last.
place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb where Jesus was laid. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes, that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Could have known 
For the earth began to shake And the will was torn What sacrifice was made And the heavens roar oh, And all
Jesus, we thank you for your love towards us. How can we not love you, Jesus, for what you've done for us? Thank you. Today, all we can say, Jesus, you paid such a price, such a price that even death could not hold you down. Let us today begin to believe victory is ours. Victory in every area of our lives. The stone is rolled away. We look to you, Jesus, and we say, thank you, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. You became the darling of heaven for us. And today you are alive and well. So we say, thank you. Thank you. I believe right now, God the Father, Abba, Daddy, Jesus, Daddy, God is actually right now cultivating in us a heart of beauty. A heart of beauty. The abundance of our hearts. Love is going to flow. It's going to spread onto others we are not going to have a choice but to love let's think what Jesus did for us and let's come on come on let's cultivate a love within us to just love people around us no matter where we go what happens we are in the process of being sanctified but being made perfect in him and so we bless everyone. We're going to get ready now to partake in Holy Communion. We're going to do something in remembrance. It's in remembrance, remembering that the price was already paid. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to do this chorus again of all hail King Jesus. You're watching at home right now, just before communion. You know, the scripture says he was marred beyond recognition. The darling of heaven was marred which, what is the meaning of marred, butchered, beyond recognition. Every fiber in me shakes when I think of that. And this wonderful, precious Jesus, without any sin, was marred beyond recognition so that you and I could be the beauty for him. If that doesn't shake you, what will? Now with everything in your heart, let us lift this wonderful song To all, everything within us, to Jesus. So come on team, let's lift up our voices. No hell, King Jesus. Lift up your voices in your homes. No hell, King Jesus. Worship Him in your house. And all hell, King This voices and all King Jesus. None but Jesus. Come on, lift up your voices. And all King Come on, Jesus. sing in your homes right now. All Come on, lift up your voices. Jesus. Hear up the worship.
What Thank an amazing you, worship. Yeah. All hail King Jesus. Yes. My brothers and sisters, what a beautiful day today it is. It's Good Friday, the day mm. that we remind ourselves that without Jesus, this life would have been not meaningful. Without yeah. Jesus, we would not be able to come to you. Without Jesus, I don't know what would this world would look like. We're just going through this pandemic season, Marina, and here we are. I, I had somebody ask me the other day, how do people live without Jesus? Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Wow. So here we are, friends. We want to sort of uh, welcome you to get your communion elements together because yeah. today is Good Friday. And being Good Friday, um, we want to remind ourselves that our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, paid a ransom price for us. So um, make sure you have your elements with you. But Marina, what are you sensing from yeah, the Holy Spirit? Yeah, I hope Spirit? you all had a blessed time worshiping the Lord, trusting, believing. You know, we've stepped into a new time, a new season of His abundant grace. Uh, I believe through worship, I picked up on the Lord this season asking us to celebrate one another celebrate one another. In order to love God, you first got to love yourself and love people around you. And I believe even right now, the word love, love is awakening in our spirit. So come on, stretch your hands, open up your hands and just receive those embraces, those kisses right now. The Lord already pay, has paid it all and just get ready. We, you, we cannot love him whom we have not seen and hate people in front of us. So I, I believe as we are getting ready, you know, through this process where this beautiful worship and you, wow. you've actually went through this remembering Jesus going to the cross and yes. paying that price, yes, his body Lord. broken, Thank scourged, you, blood gushed out. Thank you, I believe right now, you, There's Jesus. a refreshing, refreshing happening in the spirit. You, the spirit wow. of God, the fire of God coming alive in us, refreshing wow. our spirits, bringing joy, bringing you, peace, Lord. bringing wow. hope. I believe redemption, sanctification, healing, and thank making you, us Jesus. whole. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. thank you Lord, without the cross, yes. where would we be? Come and on. Lord, we do not put you back on the cross, yes. but we are here remembering yes. what you did. Yes. celebrating that big, that heavy, that mighty price you, that you Holy paid Spirit. for my sins. Come on, Thank my you, sins, so that my body may be put together, Thank my you, mind may be renewed, my heart Thank be you, healed. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank Lord. You, Lord. Wow. And so as we are getting ready right now to partake in Praise Holy you, Communion, I, I want to bring this verse to all of us. And it's from 1 Corinthians 10, 14. Actually, let's go to 16. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf we who are many are one body, for we partake 
of the one loaf that is Jesus Christ. You know, come on, let's come together as one. When we do this, this verse brings us into an intimate relationship, that intimate participation where we receive the benefits, the broken body and blood, the benefits where our bodies now are not just healed, but, but we come in participation, agreeing to what Jesus has already done and paid that price on the cross. So let's get ready. And Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Lord, Marina as we're them. getting ready to celebrate wow. the price that you've already paid, I, I just actually, right now, let's come into that place of, you know, there's anyone you need to forgive. Yeah. Anyone who sinned against you, you've sinned against. I love, this is our time. Thank you, Jesus. This is our time. An intimate relationship with the one who's already done it all. Wow. So, Lord Jesus, we just want to take these few minutes, Lord. Thank bring you, Lord. to memory, bring to mind anyone who has sinned against us and who we've sinned against, we do this in remembrance, in remembrance of you. Yeah, Lord, we choose to forgive anyone that may have hurt us. Mm -hmm. You know, as Marina has been reminding us, let's do that. You know, yeah. if someone has offended you, yeah. someone didn't meet your requirements, oh. someone just felt short in fulfilling the desires of your heart, just say, Lord, wow. I forgive that person. Thank you, Jesus. Because the cross is all about forgiveness. Amen, yeah. The cross is about that he forgave you so we can forgive others. So he asked to take a moment and forgive someone. And maybe you need to ask for forgiveness. Maybe this was a, a season or a year that you've been hard on people. Amen. You've been difficult with people. So ask the Lord, Lord, please forgive me for being that way. So as we are about to partake of the bread, Marina, here's the bread. Why don't you take it from the top? Right? Let's open up our hearts before unto the Lord. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. And let's begin wow. to say, Lord, mm. your broken body was broken for me. Yeah. You know, it's here in Romans 5, verse 25. Let's read from 24. But for our sake also, to whom righteousness will be credited, as those who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was betrayed and crucified because of our sins, and was raised from the dead because of our justification. So Lord, we thank you for your precious body. Your sinless body was broken for my sinful body. So Lord, we are... We eat this bread in remembrance of what you've done for us on the cross. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we ask King for our bodies to be made whole right yes, now. Yes, Lord. Our minds to be made whole mm -hmm. right now. Our thought patterns to come in alignment ah, with yeah, the will Jesus. of the Father. Mm -hmm. And any illness in our body right now, anything that our body is not responding to, Father, we ask you, as we eat this bread right now, yeah. our bodies will come in alignment to your purpose mm -hmm. and your will. We eat this in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you just break that into half, Marina, so that way yeah. we can have it so together. So Jesus' body broken, that my body may be put together. Come on, put your hand on your mind, your heart, and say, Jesus' body broken so that my body may be put together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for that divine exchange. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. We worship you. We worship you. We thank you for the wonderful cross. We thank you for the wonderful brokenness of your life mm -hmm. makes us whole. By your stripes, we are healed right now, according yeah. to Isaiah 53, verse 5. You were chastised for our well-being. Thank you, Jesus. We are made whole because of what you've done for us on the cross. Mm -hmm. We receive our healing today, now, at this very moment. Amen. 
at this very moment, just call on your yeah. body you, right Jesus. now to come in alignment with the will of the mm -hmm. Father. Jesus, make my body whole. Heal my body right now. Heal my mind right Thank now. You. Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank Jesus, you. your body scourged, that blood gushed out so that every curse, every iniquity in me and my bloodline Thank you, Lord. will be made whole. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on. And now do this. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. So as we partake right now of this element, remember what Jesus did. And let's share this, Faustin. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Father. We worship you. Thank we you, worship Lord. you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your precious blood that cleanses our innermost being, mm -hmm. cleanses our thought pattern, cleanses yeah. our life, cleanses from any untoward thing that we may have picked up along the way. Thank you, Jesus. Father, today we receive your finished work of the cross. Huh? And by your finished work of the cross, Father, we say no to sickness, no to the plans of the enemy. Amen. Because God is a good God. Amen. And he sent his wonderful son, Jesus, yeah. to die for us. That we can come together as a family and say, God is good and he's good all, all the, the time. time. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Hey, friends. I want to share this wonderful message about heaven and hell. I know it kind of seems a little bit scary when you talk about heaven and hell. We think it's like a doomsday talk and we think it's like the world is coming to an end and so on. But that's not ex actually what I want to share with you today. Um, you know, I was just reading through the scriptures and I no made note of this, that heaven is mentioned 582 times between the Old and the New Testament. And hell is mentioned only 54 times. So that is enough evidence for you and I to believe that our Heavenly Father's his plan was never that any one of us should perish. That all of us that he has brought into the world is to be with him in heaven. And hell was never his plan for you and I. So I just want to say that on the upfront, that today as I'm going to talk to you from two different book from the book of Matthew and from the book of Luke, I want to bring you an understanding who is heaven for and who is hell for. So if you turn with me to Matthew chapter 11, and let's look at from verse 20. Jesus done some profound miracles during his time, but then he has this rebuke for these cities because they did not repent. That's what he says right here in Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. Then he began to denounce the people in the cities in which most of his miracles were done because they did not repent. What does that really mean? That means they did not change their hearts. They did not change their lives. So every time we see a miracle happen in our own personal life, every time we hear the word of God, every time we believe God has said something, it should have an impact on our life. It should reflect in our day-to-day -day actions. It should reflect on who we are on the inside. And that's what I want to kind of touch on today. And then it goes on to say in verse 21, Woe to you, Bethsaida, because he has done miracles there. And if I had done these miracles in Tyre and Sidon, then they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Again, I remind you that they would have changed their heart. They would have expressed sorrow for their sin and rebellion against God. My brothers and sisters, this is, seems a bit heavy. But I want to help you see, God has not given us signs and wonders and miracles so he can say that I am God. He does not need to announce that he is God. He is God without your opinion, without your suggestion. He is God. 
Then he goes on to say again, Nevertheless, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the people of Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment and then for you. And you, Capernaum, now in Capernaum, that's where Jesus started his ministry. That's where he did most of his teaching. Are you to be exalted in heaven? You will descend to Hades, which is hell. For if the miracle that done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until that this day. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. Wow, that's a pretty strong rebuke. He had compassion on people. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He did all these amazing things. But yet the hearts of people did not change. My friends, when we have an apathy mindset, when we are not responsive to what God is asking us to do, He has just given us a bit of a warning. Heaven is not for you. Yes, it seems a bit off, isn't it? It seems a bit scary. But that's exactly what happened. If you turn with me to Luke chapter 16, I want to give you an understanding where Jesus gave us a sneak review or a preview or a sneak um, knowledge of what heaven and hell looks like. Here it is in Luke 16 from verse 19. Here I'm going to give you an understanding that there is a heaven and who does it belong to and there is a hell. So let's look at right here. Now there was a certain rich man who was habitually dressed in expensive purple and fine linen and celebrated and lived joyously in splendor every day. And a poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate, covered with sores. He eagerly longed to eat the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Besides, even the dogs were coming and licking his sores. Now it happened that the poor man died, and his spirit was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, which is the hell, the realm of the dead, being in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in severe agony in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things all the comforts and delight, and Lazarus likewise bad things. But now he's comforted here while you are in severe agony. And beside all this between us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to come over from here will not be able, and none may cross over from there to us. So the rich man said, Then Father Abraham, I beg you to send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers in order that he may solemnly warn them and witness to them so that they too will not come to this place of torment, a place of torment, which is hell. But Abraham said, they have Moses and prophets, let them listen to them. He replied, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. They will change their old way of thinking and seek God and his righteousness. And he said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded, even if someone rises from the dead. Wow. Here is a good understanding and a good revelation. There is a heaven and there is a hell. Interestingly, Jesus is saying this, sharing this with us. And interestingly, the people in heaven get to look what's going on in hell, and people in hell get to look what's going on in heaven. That's kind of very interesting. Something also very interesting. The rich man lived a very lavish life, but he was so busy with, about himself and his life that he forgot that there was a beggar sitting outside his palace. You see, my brothers and sisters, this is a rude awakening for all of us. That sometimes in the busyness of our own life, 
Sometimes in the busyness of all about me, sometimes in the busyness of what about this and what about that, we forget there are a group of people that God has put in our lives that he is wanting us to help them, wanting us to look out for them. You see, God has blessed us so we can bless others. That's kind of the moral, that story that I learned watching the life of this rich man. And on the other hand, Lazarus, when he died, it says he went to Abraham's bosom. Now, if you want to understand the bosom of Abraham, read John 1.18. Jesus was found in the intimate presence of the Father, in the bosom of the Father. That's what he's referring to. What is happening in the bosom of the Father? It's a place of honor. It's a place of rest. It's a place of no torment. It's a place of peace. That describes heaven. Then he goes on to say, you know, in Hades, there is torment. Now that is pretty agonizing. I mean, as it is while on this earth, there is a whole lot of troubles going on right now, which is already becoming unbearable. The, the mental health issue is rising up. Crime rates are rising up. Everything on this earth is becoming absolutely unbelievable. Just think of that. If this is unbelievable and hard to live by, what would it look like to live in hell? What would it look like to be tormented and being in agony? That's what this rich man is going through. Can you think of that? And But he can see on the other side, he sees the very same beggar or the poor man that was in outside the palace whom he probably saw him all the time. So he recognized him. That's very interesting. In heaven and in hell, we recognize each other. He recognized Abraham. That's very interesting, isn't it? And so he is calling out to Father Abraham and he's saying to him, can you please tell Lazarus to come and now soothe me, give me the comfort Yet he did not do while he was on earth. So there is obviously an understanding. There's obviously a place where you're beginning to have a reflection. Oh my goodness, how mean I was to Lazarus while I was on earth. I was worried about brand new clothes every day. I was worried about what I'm going to wear tomorrow. I was worried about what I should be driving. What should I be thinking? But yet I passed by this poor man and I never once paid attention to him. This is something for us to think. What is repentance? The way we change, the way we think, the way we think, the way we live, the way we change, the way we think, the way we do things, and we begin to reflect and say, gosh, where should I change? What should I? Like, this is our season. This is our opportunity, even when we are going through pandemic. Lord, help my heart. What should I be changing? Well, how should I become responsive to what you're doing right now on earth. These are the questions I encourage and ask you. Think about it. Let me, let me give you some another reflection. Okay, here it is. Who's in hell? The rich man is in hell. Who's in heaven? Abraham and Lazarus is in heaven. And so then this dialogue is happening between Abraham and this rich man. And I, as I just read the scriptures, but it's so interesting that he says, Abraham says, even if somebody raises from the dead will come back to say heaven is real, they will not believe. My friends, who is the one who's been raised from the dead? It's Jesus. It's Jesus who's raised from the dead. It's Jesus who's seated at the right hand of the Father. It's Jesus who's the only way to the Father. So he is bringing to give us an understanding that Jesus has risen from the dead. And now over 2,000 years ago, we are still talking about Jesus who's risen from the dead. My question to you and I, who else do you want from heaven to come down to tell you that heaven is real and hell is real? Who else do you want more to come down? Do you want Jesus to come again? Yes, he is coming again. It's absolutely true. He's coming again. 
But who is he coming for? The one who believes in him. He's coming to take you and I to heaven, a place where there's pleasure, where there's rest, where there's honor. But he's only coming for those who believe in him. So my question to you in closing, do you believe in him? Do you believe that Jesus is the one who lives in heaven? In a few moments, Danny's going to come and give you an altar call and he's going to ask you a few questions. And I want to give you the opportunity that today is your day that you ask that question to yourself. How many more miracles do you need to see to believe in God? How many more blessings you need to have in your life to believe in God? Because Jesus, the very one who did signs and wonders and miracles, was the very one he denounced the cities. He said, if I had done this in another city, they would have turned from their wicked ways. They would have repented of their sin. They would have become responsive to my, my call, and they would have turned to me and lived their life for God. So my last point to you today is that what riches are you following? Here in the same Luke chapter 16, verse 11, it says, Therefore you have not been faithful in the use of earthly wealth. Who will entrust the true riches to you? You know, we learned this in the Bible study just last week, or this week actually, And I've been thinking so hard about it. If God has given me this earthly wealth to look after, how am I handling it? Am I being like the rich man who's like only holding it for himself? Or is he willing to share with someone who's in need right now? Because I've been stewarded with something God has given me. And I'm willing to bless somebody. And I'm willing to give somebody. And I'm working that in my heart every day of my life. Because I want the true riches of heaven. So in closing, I want to say, turn to Jesus. Father, I speak a blessing, first and foremost, to all those who believe in Jesus. That their faith would increase at this hour. That their faith would rise within them to know that Jesus is coming back for them. And I pray for the rest of them who do not know Jesus as they will get an altar call a moment from now that their hearts would be ready to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior because he surely, surely loves you. As I said earlier in closing, heaven is mentioned over 500 times and hell is hardly mentioned in the Bible. Hell was meant for only Satan and his demons But unfortunately, some of us, like this rich man, choose not to pay attention to life. So I bless you that on this Good Friday, you would consider it in your heart very seriously because it is a big decision of your life. And it will change your life because it did for me. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Today is a, a day that's a little different. Today is a day very popularly known. It's known for the death of Jesus Christ. And It's also a day to celebrate what Jesus did for you and for me. It's a day where where God came and He gave everything that He had. And the thing is that He didn't have to. He didn't have to do any of that. He didn't have to didn't have to come, didn't have to endure that pain, go through that suffering. He didn't have to do any of that for you and for me. But there's a, there's a reason why God came. And the only reason is love, is love for you and for me, is unconditional love for you and for me. God couldn't stand the fact that we were separated from Him because of sin. It, it, it couldn't, it, it, he couldn't, he couldn't accept that. He couldn't accept the fact that my precious, 
people are taken away from me because of sin. And obviously God is such an amazing and sovereign and just God. Because in his word it says the wages of sin is death. So he, he didn't change the law. But God came to fulfill the law and to set us free. And that's what Good Friday is. It's called Good Friday for a reason because God came and He changed our lives. He turned it around from that day till tomorrow, till the days to come. It's already done. Everything that God planned for us is back on track. He corrected the course of humanity by giving His Son to die for us on that cross. And today I just want to talk to two sets of people. And set number one, I want to talk to the people who've never known Jesus personally. Uh, you probably know about Him, but you've never known Him as a father, as a friend, um, as a savior. And today, you're feeling lost. You're feeling, feeling ignored. You're feeling anxious. You feel like nobody loves you. You feel like you don't know what you're doing on this earth. You feel like you don't know what you're doing with your life, maybe with your business, your job, your family. You know, that's exactly like, that's, that's how I feel sometimes. And this past year, those emotions have only been elevated. <laughs> Isolation plays dirty tricks on your mind, takes a toll on your emotions, on your, on, on your spirit man. And if you're feeling like that today, if you're feeling that, hey, you know what, I'm just at my wit's end. We're on the verge of another lockdown. But if you're feeling all of these emotions and you're looking for an answer, your answer is Jesus. There is, uh, there is no other way for me to explain this, but there is power in the name of Jesus. What he did on that cross, the love that he poured out is a love that can, re that, that is the only love that can transform your situation. And today I just want to give you this message point blank. I'm, I'm not going to wrap it up in, 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 in a nice way and be like, hey, here's something that you might like. I'm going to tell you the truth. And it's in John 3.16, God says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. For whosoever believes in Him will have eternal life. And it's as simple as that. Whosoever believes in Him. So if you're watching this today, you're watching it because you were looking for something. You were looking for a topic. You were looking for something on these particular lines to find uh, find a way to ease your mind or ease your emotions. And you came across this video or someone invited you to this to, to watch this video in our, li in our life service. And so it's not by accident that you're here. Everything that happens is, about, is by design of the Father up there. So if you're feeling those things, it's as easy as just believing in Christ and saying, Father, this is me. This is what I'm going through. And God is not worried about what, what you've done. Because that, 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 that is already been taken care, of, care on the cross. God's already taken care of all of that on the cross. When He died for you, your sins were washed clean. Everything that you're going through, every problem that you're about to face is already been taken care of. Every sickness has been healed. And that is the Father we have in heaven. And if you'd like to get to know this Father, if you'd like to get to know Him, understand who He is to you personally, a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Him, then you're in the right place. Because we as a church are all about the Father's heart. Understanding more of it, to just ask God to reveal more of that so that it will impact us daily. So you're in the right place. A second group of people, you know Christ. You've seen amazing things done in your life. You love Him, you follow Him. But also you've kind of forgotten and taken for Him, taken Him for granted. And today, you're looking to give your life back to Jesus. You're looking to kind of just reconnect with, with the Father in Heaven. This is your time. This is your day. It's Good Friday because it's a restoration of, of your connection with God, the Father. It's Good Friday because you get to go back into the Father's house where He's going to clothe you with a robe, put a ring on your finger, and He's going to throw a feast because you returned home. That's what happens in heaven when, when you return home. Heaven celebrates. 
So today, with you, with your commitment back to God, we are going to celebrate. We are, we're not going to be sad about what's going on. We're just going to celebrate the fact that God is in complete control. Everything that's happening around us, He's in complete control over your life and over mine. So we're just going to go into this, into to a moment where we're going to, we're going to say a prayer. We're going to reconnect with God. We're going to recommit our lives to Him. And this is a step of faith. Guys, whoever's watching me, this is a step of faith. It, sometimes in, in, in your logical mind, it's not going to make sense. But that's the whole point of just taking that step. Trust me, take that radical step right now. If you want to get up wherever you're sitting, if you're, if you're watching in bed or if you're sitting on your couch or in your dining table or on your desk, you want to get up. And we're going to do this together. And you're just going to repeat after me. And you're just going to say, Father, this is me. I have sinned. I have fallen short of your glory. I have done things in my life that I'm not the happiest about. There are things in my life that are going on that I'm not the most happiest about. And Father, today, I choose to look past that. And I choose to shift my gaze to you. And I say, Father, would you just come and take your place in my life? I open up my heart to you. And I say, won't you just come and take your place in my life? God, this is, this is a step of faith that I'm taking and I want to invite you into my life. I say this after me. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. Forgive me because I knew not what I was doing. Forgive me because I was blind and I didn't see. Forgive me that I didn't hear the words that were being spoken. The true words, the true words of the Father that were being spoken. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me is all that I've done wrong in, in, in my knowing and in my unknowing. But God, at this moment, I just commit my life to you. I commit my life to you and I say, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in my life, God. Everything that I put my hand to, let it glorify your name. Every time I open my mouth, let it glorify your name. Father, would you just make this heart your home? Would you come and transform my life? Because you love me first, God, for all that you've done for me. I commit my life into your hands. And from this day on, I choose to believe in what your son did for me, where he paid the price on that cross. My sins are forgiven. My debt is paid. And my salvation comes from the Lord. I believe that with all my heart that everyone who said this prayer, just believe it right now. I just say it. Father, I believe that my sin has been dealt with on that cross and I am forever changed. In your name I pray, amen. That was amazing, guys. That, that, is, that is the truth, that your sins are forgiven. They're never gonna come back and play. As long as you believe and you follow the commandments that God has laid out for you. If you are new and you've committed your life to Jesus, or even if you've, you've recommitted your life to Jesus and you wanna know more on how to just find out what the plan of God is for your life, contact us our, our facebook page is active um you can just log on to ctfmissasaga.com and you can probably fill up fill up a form and we'll get in touch with you we'll pray with you and if you want to talk further on on life we'd love to do life with you so we're just glad you're here we're just glad that we're able to serve jesus with you guys together as one kingdom so come on over again and again we're going to be here on sunday for easter to celebrate the resurrection of our lord but just remember one thing, God is already alive. God is already in power. God is already ruling and God is already in control. So whatever it is, just, just know that your father is looking out for you and he will never let you down because he doesn't know how. He doesn't know how. He, he'll, his love for you and me, will, will, he'll never forsake us. He could, he could never do anything to break a promise his word is full of promises if you read it 
It's process for you and for me. As long as we believe, as long as we live a life pleasing to Him, God will not hold anything back from us. So I bless you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you on Easter. Take care. Bye. And all